All right, let's talk about you having missing UTM parameters. Now, this is a little bit hard to test from an API perspective. You know, it's hard for us to know all of the places that you could have UTM parameters that you don't have UTM parameters. But let's talk about why it's important first. Number one, if you don't have UTM parameters that this describe as best you can, you don't have good coverage on all the links pointing to your site that you can control or influence at all, then you have a reduced capability to know where visitors come from and know what you've done that, re that results in visitors and then ultimately purchases or conversion events. So you have to get UTMs in place. Now, it's doubly important if you ever want to do attribution across channels and do cross-channel cost per conversion or cost per purchase or return on ad spend analysis, the only way to join the data together is with the UTM. So you have to do this. Now, if some of these are scenarios that may show up in here, you go, ah, we can't control that. And I would say if they're here, there's, if they're in this list, there's a chance that you can control them. So you should at least think about it. Now, for all of your paid channels, most advertisers get their paid channels tracked mostly right with UTMs, or at least mostly tracked. We're pretty opinionated on how they get put in place because that cost data thing needs to be pretty cleanly done in order to, to do cost per acquisition across channels. But most people get something in place on the paid channels. It's the organic channels that a lot of times they don't get things in place. Now, for Google organic traffic, search traffic, you're not going to get that, but you're not going to be able to place UTMs and you don't need to. It's okay. But for scenarios like you have a YouTube channel and you put links in the, in the descriptions, a lot of times those things get missed. A lot of times social posts that go out get missed and they don't have the post that was applied that in the UTM content parameter. And a lot of times they come in just looking like they got shared. And some scenarios like Facebook tries to shorten links and remove these parameters so to, to reduce the amount of, of the, the amount of length in the links that they put out. That actually turns out to be a cost savings to Facebook. So, some and there's ways to get around that you can use URL shorteners. Sometimes that's not worth the effort that in the return. But if you're doing a lot of organic content and don't have UTM parameters that describe how folks are getting to your site, then you're gonna have a hard time describing what marketing efforts are actually producing results. So if you want to talk about some of the strategies, some of these are technical strategies, not just make sure you get things in the right place. It's like, how do we use links? How do we make sure that we have refers that get passed from domains? Do we have the right meta tags in place to do that? Are our SSL certificates and redirects set up so that we don't ever lose parameters? So there's some technical things that you might be thinking about resolving or technical ideas about URL link shortening um, thinking about how to manage that stuff that we've done every way it possibly could get done probably. And so don't hesitate to reach out and give us a call. Now, one other thing that you can do is when you have traffic that comes in that doesn't have parameters on it, sometimes even with great processes, this will happen. If you have the data in BigQuery, if you get your analytics data in BigQuery and you get your search console data and you get your Google ads data in BigQuery, a lot of times you can catch these things and, oh, and say, oh, we know that for these visitors from this time period, these should have been tagged this way. And as a result, you can create a rule in the code that says tag these visitors from this time period this way and correct the data even though it wasn't collected accurately in the first place. You can only do that if you have access to the raw data. If you don't have your BigQuery connection turned on, get it turned on. If you don't know how to write that code, we have an amazing tooling interface that allows you to do that without writing SQL. Leveraging the benefits of a warehouse without writing SQL is magic. If you wanna talk about that stuff, reach out, please.